<laughs> All right. Well, thank you, uh, John, for coming today. It is a great pleasure to have you. And we are here. Uh, we, as in Kobe's Brain, Teddy Toast, Gummy Worman, we're hoping to, to chat about some virtual production. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So, all right, great. No, great, man, great. <laughs> what about Gummy Worm? And I didn't, I didn't hear Gummy Worm sign in. Oh, sorry. Hey, it was Gummy Worm. What's up? <laughs> sorry, I spaced out for like two seconds. Yo. Uh, so, John, John Ferret, <laughs> <laughs> tell us Garrett. what is virtual production. <laughs> Wait, we should introduce uh, John first. Oh yeah, we should. We should. We have to give him an introduction. Um, Whew, I got this. You saved me. This is a toast. A saved by the toast, man. Thank you. <laughs> saved by the toast. toast. It's all good. That's what I'm here for. Man. Lack, lack, I apologize for the lack of professionalism here on the show. Uh, so John Brennan is a professor. Legend. Uh, is a professor at the University of Southern California. He teaches motion capture and also Cal Arts, right? On occasion, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he teaches motion capture. He uh, has worked on uh, the virtual production of count of countless films, including Lion King, Ready Player One, and uh, Jungle Book. Yeah. Any any others I'm missing there? Uh, most re most recently, uh, Morbius. Morbius, nice. Morbius. Uh, and so he's a vampire. Mor Mor Morbius is a vampire. <laughs> and so we are we are honored to have him on on the show t uh, this evening. All right, John. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to be here. I really like uh, I really like the weasel weasel ferret that you that you've all have created for me. It's really cute. <laughs> Um, my posture is really open and relaxed, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like if uh, you know, it's like I, I'm a guest, and I guests should never make demands. But I feel like the, the toast is in my spot because, like, I'm the guest. I feel like, I feel like, the, to I feel like the toast should be here, and I should be should next fight. to the brain. Yeah, we I wanted you to be as close to the camera as possible. <laughs> now you can't do any close-ups on me. Oh, we're we're doing close-ups no. on you as we speak. Actually, oh, we're, we're doing close-ups. <laughs> oh wow! All right. Oh, awesome. We are right. In, we are right up there right now. So that brings us to our first question, uh, John Ferret. Yes. What is virtual production? Well, uh, well, Co 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 Kobe's brain. That that's certainly a very sobering question. Um, where to even begin? I think actually that's like a panic inducing question. Cause every time somebody asks me that question, I, I, I don't know where to start. Like, I feel like I have to define production for them. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually, I was actually listening, uh, to Bill Pope on the team Deacons podcast, uh, this summer everybody's in uh you know everybody's in lockdown so um roger deakins has a has a p p podcast i guess with his daughter and his son or some kind of family thing going on and they invited bill uh, on there um and he was asking him about uh how he worked on jungle book and those sorts of things and i thought bill pope said something really interesting he said um and to pre and to preface this right like bill pope uh he directed the matrix he did like um, Army of Darkness. He's worked, 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 worked with Sam Raimi a bunch, so you could view him as like a cinematographer that was really friendly to vi to visual effects and kind of really took the time to understand how to make these really kind of heavy movies. But that involved a lot of green screen and a lot of like banging his head into the wall and a lot of sacrifice. Uh, and what he said about vir 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 virtual production was pretty cool. Uh, and what he said was he. I'm gonna try to like weave this thing correctly. He he was used to working. Um, sorry, is that the jet on my end? 
Hey everybody, Weasel here. Sorry to get distracted. Um, the um, <laughs> what he was what he was essentially saying was that um, it's a difficult process when you're posting, uh, when you shoot your movie, and the whole post production process uh, is where all the, 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 the really the the answers, like the questions, get solved, and where all the answers are. And so you can finish shooting your movie, and you can have a bunch of, then you have to babysit your movie uh, when it's done. And that's been the state of movie making as far as like movie making where everything needs to be constructed and the kind of blockbuster movies we're used to. It's been that it's a couple decades now. I would think that um, virtual production is something that allows creative people like the director, like the cinematographer and like everybody to kind of make their decisions and get their answers on the set. Um, so it means that we build these virtual worlds and we make these tools so that film makers can be filming and they can walk away with like a sense of what their cut is even though it's in a video game engine and they can be confident uh that they didn't have to use their imagination so to speak right that they actually captured something mm. sorry that's that's as concise as i can make it right now i hope i hope to get better in the future i think virtual production is a way to address how impoverished and kind of lame film sets became on a certain type of movie that certain type of movie being blue screen green screen movies where anything kind of you know magical or effects driven is happening it became a real pain in the butt to shoot movies like that um and it's not really uh maybe not by coincidence that all of us with our you know interactive game playing and inhabiting virtual worlds and all that sort of thing um that technology could be redirected so that people could actually inhabit the worlds that they are filming wow. right that, that, i think that's a little more concise oh that's great that's great is when when traditional filmmakers are pitched new tools new virtual production tools specifically are they told that I guess it's easier to bring back the like like more traditional filmmaking methods back into CG heavy productions, or is the sell to them just completely different? No, that's the wholesale. That's the that's the sale. And then every time I've been involved, like then becomes like the brutal brutal truth, which is that like <laughs> like the the sale is like not quite fully realized yet, and they still have to suffer through all these new learning, you know, jumping through all these new hoop, learning all these new things. So those are like cranky sets for the first few months. This is like bad times and cranky sets, I would say. Only, oh, only wow. to you, Kobe, Kobe's brain and and piece of toast. I would only, I would only um, and 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 Brenda Worm um. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, that's, that's super <laughs> interesting. I think what I'm what I'm specifically curious about is when we see these like final films, they're actually pretty comparable to what you know other CGI films look like. So I'm wondering like how much how much does virtual production really speed up or actually like add to the process versus you know how much is is actually dealt with in the normal post production pipeline as other films would, would do it. Does that make sense? No, could you could you rephrase it a little bit? Because I, I got to thinking on it too early. I, I got <laughs> lost on a tangent. <laughs> yeah, me, no hit problem. me with it again. I'm just a I'm just okay, a ferret. Maybe maybe a better <laughs> I'm, I'm just keeping toes. We're on the same plane. I, I maybe a better way to phrase it is recently uh, I've I've seen a lot of real time films that you know say that they were rendered in a real time engine, whether that's like Unreal or Unity. But I think a lot of the, 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 the work actually happens outside of the engine, whether that's the animation, the texturing, um, the timing, storyboarding, whatever. So how much of the work is actually saved or how much time is really saved with virtual production tools versus, you know, just being able to do it in a traditional method or like with traditional yeah. methods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky. Uh, I'm lucky that I'm not selling anything here, you know, like I'm lucky <laughs> I don't have to sell this to y'all. Because like the like the official kind of sales pitch of that would be that like oh everything's gonna be you know everything's gonna be greater and faster and, and you know maybe that will manifest eventually but essentially I don't even really that sales pitch isn't even really the one that I would like uh, fight for the one 
to address your question is it's really just as these real time kind of uh, techniques are more possible. It's a shifting of a lot of the effort that happens into the post into effort that takes place right before it lands on set. That's in an ideal world once nice. these engines are, are good enough to where it's projects other than niche projects or characters other than the single robot can be rendered in this fashion. But think about, I mean, your question gives me a chance to answer this really nicely, but think about like that's that is in that's the essence of I guess what I want to say about virtual production is that it's taking this big bloated post production process and right. it's like re redirecting it uh, to a different part of the filmmaking process so that not the not only the audience appreciate all that awesome magic in post but the filmmakers and the actors and the people worrying on working on the set get to appreciate it too and oh hey maybe they appreciate it so much that it causes them to shoot better cameras or they yeah the movie is like more responsive to the effects and it doesn't look um you know what what do we what do we know it may just it may become more compelling that way yeah so it's almost like getting the answers faster in the process for, for the yes. filmmakers themselves yes cool. at the very okay. least oh go ahead go ahead oh no no no. you, you go ahead i can I'll well at, later. okay well at the very least if you were like a big fancy fancy pants director or cinematographer it would let you like walk away from your project and not have to babysit it so hard through the pr post-production process where like ferrets like me are like tweaking details <laughs> and everything and you got to like whip them back into shape and be like that's not the color of the sky and this shot wasn't supposed to take it. Why are you changing it tonight? We, we said that was going to be noon. Like all those questions would all, would yeah. all be like sorted, right? So that's, totally. like, that's, that's like the least cool version of this that happens. Like just where like filmmakers that can walk away and like know that what they captured matters. And then, 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 then the, cooler, the cooler version of it is like we we're saying earlier, like we're hinting at, um, well, we shouldn't even have to hint at it. I think we've all even take introductory like filmmaking classes and photography classes like that's like a live process right um right so if you can bring all of the things that necessity caused you to bring after the fact and kind of make dead and pretend that they're alive if you can bring those back into being like living organic things that you can shoot with the assistance of technology well you know like what will people discover it's you know it's just like some kind of very you're very flowy creative friend uh, with their camera being inspired by some shadows and then that's going to be the photograph that they're going to take of some shadows or of a reflection of something right yeah. things 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 oftentimes become more interesting when someone's not calling every shot you know with there's some exceptions but that they, 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 they breathe it breathes life into it so maybe this is a hope of breathing life into things I mean, as as you were talking, something that it made me think of was like almost like a like a byproduct of this process is just improving communication among among like different members of the crew, right? Who are otherwise disconnected. So I feel like that isn't even like a top level cell that makes the whole process so much easier for everyone involved. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I just had like a Barrett thought way you were speaking like, <laughs> like maybe it's not like maybe it's not just on maybe it's not just on, on set like maybe what we're all doing here is creating a a communications protocol for being productive in, in, in virtual space too for the marriage of virtual and kind of Ooh. real yo that right wow. that's some xr shit that's the spiciest Dude. Virtual production set. I want to puff a smoke for my ferret, man. Like, like the tail like lights on fire or something. That, 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 that one thing that was really funny on the Lion King set, because that's kind of as 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 far as we've gotten with like innovating so far. It was really funny uh, once we got, you know, once we put out all the fires, because it. I mean, I can tell you guys some stories sometimes, but it's just really crazy how many things broke. <laughs> but once we got halfway th halfway through and things were actually working, like yeah, we went, we started like searching for for different roles that we could enable. So we started building special tools for like the um, the um, the camera grip, so the dolly operator. So we started building dolly operator tools. And like, if you look at virtual production, if you go all the way back, back to like James Cameron and Avatar or Zemeckis before him, to be fair, like you're only addressing 
the director or the cinematographer but the, by the Ooh. time we get to lion king we had a set decorator in vr oh. working we had a we ha you know we went through five dolly grips like the attrition rate on our dolly grips was insane because we blew we blew all their heads up and they kept making excuses to leave and take other projects yeah. and finally we got one that stuck with it that, that, that was able to stick with it and be like the vr dolly grip you yeah know what I mean? actually that so that brings up one one burning question i've had for a long time which is the possibility of creating the next generation ilm and i think that when ilm was getting started you know it was one crew that was pushing the boundaries on like one film and they figured out that they could use all of this tooling for other projects whereas nowadays i feel like film crews come together and then just kind of disappear like you know like they they all kind of break apart go work on other projects so it's not necessarily one crew that's moving yeah. between projects to say oh you know this is this is the crew that's known for virtual production or for pushing the boundaries of filmmaking. It's more like, okay, here are these individuals. Like, here's John Brennan. Here's like person X, Y, and Z. Is that does that mean right. that we won't see, I guess, like the the formation of a next generation ILM in the same way, or does it just look different if it were to happen in the twenty twenties? Let's uh, let's okay. Let's let's like think about that. So. ILM's not going anywhere. They're like a big kind of bloated monster, you know, and and, yeah. they, and they yeah, and they need to be, right? Cuz the thing that ILM's kind of safeguarding is that whole post post production kind of asset creation rendering process. Right. Um and they'll be the ones that'll they'll they'll, 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 they'll if even if it goes to re real time engines, they'll they'll just pivot They'll just pivot to making all the assets and being the ones that setting up the scenes for Unreal or whatever the engine is, right? So you right. kind of need you kind of need them. They they grew out of necessity. Now, as for film crews, I mean, film crews like film crews like meeting people. If you're in that world, you like cycling from project to project. You like that you don't work for a specific company. You know, like a film. <laughs> A film company grows and implodes with every movie. They have all these fake, these fake names, right? Like the first one I worked worked for was called Fiona's, which was a reference to a, a Spider-Man character in the in the amazing Amazing Spider-Man movie I worked for. Um, I think I think Jungle Books was called Tr Truce for um, the 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 truce, the water truce in the middle of Jungle Book. Right, like these, there's these little companies that like exist and like blow up and die, and we, we, we weirdly, I think the people that do that work, like they like they they like and they love that work and they love that lifestyle. I think where we're probably working towards is once like the virtual production, um, and before I even get into that, there there are names in virtual production. Just so you know, like I I graduated and I joined the fold of people that were you know, from Zemeckis and Christmas Carol and from Avatar. So it is right. kind of like the same, the same names. Like maybe I'll send them the links to this afterwards. So there's like Ryan Began, there's Mooj, there's Garish Balakrishnan who's at Netflix now. It's a bunch of names that will keep doing this stuff and they're, you know, they'll get more and more well known. Um, or April Warren was my boss in the very beginning. Uh, she works at Disney now. Um, so that is kind of like maybe a, a more ILM-y kind of thing where you have these really key people and they're super important because like they hold all the knowledge and they have all the experience and it, and it's almost impossible for somebody else to like jump in and get as kind of right so to finally answer your question the stage where you would want to be at let's liken it uh Man, I answer, I answer questions. I take way too long. I'm so sorry, Kobe's brain. No, this is good. It's this all is, good, okay. man. It's all good. Well, like, let's, okay, well, let's liken it. Let's liken it to cam since we're talking about film right now. Let's liken it to like camera technology, right? Like, or or the cranes and the dollies that you move cameras with. Like, a, a certain innovations, right? And there were people that were like on the ball figuring that stuff out, like um, that were in the position to figure it out, had the luxury of being in that position, and then their knowledge kind of became standardized. <laughs> right. Their knowledge. <laughs> what is that? Is that the no? Band? No. 
It's 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 da, 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 man. I don't know where that noise is coming. I'm just a toast, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you got a lot of in, inexplicable talking? noise. No, 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 no. You should keep definitely keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, things get sorted out eventually, right? And so, like, and then it becomes standardized, and everybody can learn the standardized way things that that things work. And then you have camera mm-hmm. camera crews. So right now, what we're watching happen. I'm gonna cut myself short is like the Unreal Engine and Unity are trying to like standardize virtual production tools. And and once that happens, you don't need to hire the specific people that in, that built it all on Booker Avatar or Lion King because they're building those tools and refining them so that kind of everybody can do it. Um, oh, interesting. So everybody so- will be able to be a virtual production crew member. Like my students, the people that graduate will all be qualified to be that, you know? Like you right. won't, be com- we won't be competing with each other in that sense. I mean, that, that feels like it's, let me know if I'm putting words in your mouth, like that's in direct conflict with what you said before, which is about individuals holding some amount of domain expertise where they're sort of known as the ones to go to for virtual production. And I guess on the other yeah. end of the spectrum, if this is being built into off the shelf software, uh, like the engines that you mentioned, which are, you know, can access and anyone can learn, um, how does how does that dynamic shape up or how do you see it shaping up within you know the next five, ten years? Well, you build stuff. The, the tools themselves contain expertise that once experts only contained. And thus, any piece of toast can like walk up to the tools and, and use them. <laughs> and like, they are able to like do the job. I'm just kidding. Like you still need to like, 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 like you still need to like go to school, but you don't need to like have like invented the wheel. You know what I mean? I was curious to see right now, is it more expensive to, I guess, produce like normal movies with like the normal post-production? pipeline or is it more expensive to do like virtual production good question i think it's toast seconds that because <laughs> like I think you have to pay for you know like 3d modelers and all that stuff and that almost seems like a different kind of like post-production in its own yeah yeah. yeah yeah i think i think the, the correct answer the honest answer to that is that i don't think it's cheaper yet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but and, yet, it, and, and the, you know what? The key part of that answer, right? It's it's. Tre- yes. Do you think it's trending to become less expensive? Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. But you know, let's let's be real. Let's be real, real about it. You know, you're go- you're starting with Avatar, and before Avatar, you're all of Zemeckis's movies that basically sunk that studio. So that was like Image Movers getting sunk by the cost of doing that, and you know, then the movies that I've worked on, which are like super duper expensive. Um, so, yeah, like people are paying a premium to d- develop these things for the movies, but it as it gets standardized and easier and people are more trained to do it. And by the way, we like hire the right people to do the job because like glow glowworm here was bringing up a good point of like even the types of mo- the types of modelers <laughs> that that you need to actually be productive. Uh, it's a different even it's a different type of modeler than a than a post modeler. Or maybe yeah. you even need a sort of technology that like makes you know your makes the ability to level of detail and actually that that actually happens because that always gets promised, but that's not here yet, you know. Right, but who's like making the decision whether like a film uses like virtual production or not? Is it being adopted now because like directors are interested in this tech, or are there like other reasons? Like, who actually like gets to decide? So, so far, the people that get to decide are really big deal directors, hence the huge price tags, with the right. sorts of scripts where they can make a, a, I guess, a convincing argument, like, if you three were my executives, where you can make a good enough argument that I need, like, all these millions of dollars to engage with all the trouble of a virtual stage and shooting virtually that you're going to actually reap some reward from that from that effort the the, these types of movies right a a whole movie taking place on pandora a whole movie being shot virtually in africa a whole movie mostly being shot in the jungle where the boy's the only photographed element 
because to do that with real animals would like murder a bunch of boys. So it, it, there'd be no price. <laughs> there'd be no, there'd be no price tag that you right, would achieve right. it under. You, you know like what I mean? Human life. So yeah. So it's no coincidence wow. that the types of movies that get made with this technology are the types of movies that you want to be uh, using this technology to to be doing because it's even it's it's at least cheaper than the alternative or else you or they'd be unrealizable otherwise. But I guess right. where all of, yeah, where all of us want to go or where I as a ferret weasel am particularly <laughs> interested in going is like, how can we make it so that independent films or student films like are still able to use this technology and get some benefit out of it, even mm -hmm. though they're not telling ridiculous visual effects stories all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's yeah, a good question. Like I'm glad you asked it. Nixima now and stuff, and like Unreal and Unity being created, like student films are like almost reaching that level, which is like freaking cool. And you can actually like hook up everything with just like a Vive Puck. So, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Thing. Like, a Vive Puck represents like this little nugget that you used to have to pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for, like, a mo, -mo, -mo. you could only have it with a mocap stage or a specialized, mm -hmm. like you know kind of tracking system developed for that and now tracking's cheap you know yeah right that's pretty incredible actually one thing one thing that you mentioned is uh is that you know a bunch of big ticket directors are the ones who are a the ones who are able to afford this kind of tech right now and in a way they're kind of spearheading it uh by you know publicly putting their names on films that are using this kind of uh, technology and these techniques does that mean that virtual production is becoming more mainstream is it is it there right now or do you think it's still something that's more of a developing field or developing space i think when you spend as much as they spend on these things and when you suffer as much as they suffer that you end up inventing so much and you take so much pride in it and it's part of the spectacle so that's why you hear so much about the mode of production on these types of movies right um yeah because that in itself is like an accomplishment and you want to share it. Same as gravity being shot in front of a bunch of like LED walls, right? Like that's kind of such a, a novel solution and it's such a big deal and it's evocative of what should be attempted in the future that like that that becomes, you know, even part, 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 part of the the spectacle of the movie, you know, like the spectacle right. of how it was of how it was made. But a, shi a shift will ha have to becomes more regular, right? When I, <laughs> when I was in grad school, I remember working. I I'm gonna like code all these names. I'm gonna meet, I'm gonna not try to name names here. So <laughs> I remember working at a military type uh, affiliated university <laughs> lab. Um, and I remember and I remember this guy that was I, I'll I'll out this guy. He was from West Dakota. coder, um, and his whole job was to use a tracking system to fly RC helicopters. Now this was before the quadcopter videos that you see now of like mocap, like, you know, mocap helicopters, like, you know, taking yarn and like spinning thread and doing all those things. Like, so he was just trying to get this helicopter to like go up and like land on someone's gloved hand. Uh, and it was spectacular what happened the day when we actually demoed this we had like a general in to demo it and the helicopter went to the ceiling of the space it flipped up 180 degrees and it like dive bombed the floor and like blew up this helicopter did oh my god uh and i remember yeah and i remember you know and i remember like the general like patting the cadet on the shoulder being like you know like good try good try we'll try it again um but what I remember is the promo video we made afterwards where we took, we like taped the helicopter back together with its like shiny markers on it. And out of frame of the promo video, someone was holding the butt of the helicopter and was like slowly landing it on the outstretched hand of the, of the kid as he reached to grab it. Uh, so you should never forget how often that's happening, you know? And I, I don't, yeah. I don't say that to demoralize anything, but every one of these things that I've ever been a part of, any one of these endeavor, there's, there's, there's like, it's like this, it's, 
but like and but the lie is tied to an aspiration because everybody knows that it's possible so like whenever you when you see a lot of pr uh, with things i know that like kobe's brain like you're pretty sophisticated i know you roll your eyes whenever you see the behind the scenes of anything (laughs) and you and you should and you should you know what i mean but uh the fact that they're daring to even present it like it happened as smoothly as it did, <laughs> like wink, wink, you know, like all of that stuff means uh-huh. that it is close to being to, to being realized. We are at time, but I would like to thank John Ferret for being here today. <laughs> <laughs> the gummy worm. And uh, Teddy Toast for, uh, for some great questions. And we will see you all soon.